Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to make a darkroom print with converging lines like this look something a little bit more like this. If you're shooting large format, then you're already familiar with the Scheinflug principle, which allows you to manipulate the camera to get converging lines from not having your camera pointed straight at something with straight lines and make them straight. And then you can get the focus with the camera up front. If you have a smaller camera, like medium format or 35 millimeter, you can't do that you either have to point directly at, say, a building, in this case, and get the lines parallel, or you don't, and they converge. So you may want to be able to fix those and make them parallel. If you're using Lightroom and you've scanned your film, that's not a problem. You just do the little slider, it makes the lines move back and forth, and you get them straight. In the darkroom, however, it's a little bit more complicated than that, but it's not impossible. So there are two ways to do this. One way means that you have an enlarger, like that one, that has movements built in. I can tilt the negative stage and I can tilt the lens stage and we can take care of the issue. And I'm gonna show you how to do that if you have an enlarger like this. Devere and the larger Durst enlargers allow for this. The other models, like a small Durst M301, which uh, I have a, an example of in the other room, they won't allow you to do that. You can tilt the head, but that's more for side projection. You can't really do it uh, correct uh, shapes with that enlarger. Uh, some of the smaller Besslers won't let you, Omegas won't let you, uh, I, I know a Lights won't let you. So you would need to be able to kind of fudge it a little bit, and we'll look at how to do that as well. So first things first, we're going to set everything up in this enlarger. We're gonna make a print just straight up with a shot that is parallel, just for comparison. And then I turned my camera just a little bit and took a couple of shots. I just turned a little bit more each shot. And so we're gonna take the most extreme example and we're going to straighten it with the enlarger that can move. And then we will take one of the less extreme examples uh, and show you how to correct that with an enlarger that doesn't move. So let's go ahead, get everything set up back there and, uh, and start to look and see how to do that. First things first, get your negative loaded up and you should be ready to go. We're gonna go ahead and just make the first print. We'll skip on uh, beyond that. That print is with the camera parallel to the building. Lines will be straight. That's just a point of comparison. The way that we can move this if your enlarger has the motion is tilting the negative stage and then correcting focus by tilting the lens. In my case, I have a control back here that not allows me to tilt this side to side and that will straighten up any lines and then I can correct my focus once I do that by tilting the lens left to right. The way the Shine Fluke principle works is anytime we take the film, lens, and paper plane out of being parallel, then our focal plane changes. And in order to correct for the shape of the lines, we have to move the negative uh, in relation to the paper. That would be tilting the negative stage. Once we've done that, we're no longer in focus along the whole paper. We're only in focus in one part, both sides would then be blurry. We need to fix that. That's where the lens stage comes in. By tilting the lens stage the opposite direction, we are creating three planes, or rather we're converging the three planes to a common point. Once all three of these planes, negative, lens, and film, all point in the same place, then we would have straight lines and complete focus. Now, there is all sorts of math that would allow you to figure up the exact angle depending on the height and everything like that. But quite frankly, seeing it as you're doing it is the easiest and most direct way just to do it. So we're gonna turn the lights out. We're gonna turn the enlarger on. 
and then we will begin to adjust everything. Just starting with the negative stage and you're going to tilt it one way or the other until you see which way it starts to straighten up. And you can either put grid paper down in your easel or you can use the edge of the easel. And you're just going to watch for all the lines to become parallel. You might have to reposition your easel as you go uh, depending on how things are rotated a little bit. So we're almost there. Oops, I may have actually overcorrected, so I'm going to bring it back just a touch. And I'm just checking to make sure everything's straight. And that looks good. So I'm going to lock it down. And now I'm going to loosen the lens. And I have my negative plane coming down, converging with the paper plane, which is flat. They're going to come to a point at some imaginary point way off in the distance. My lens plane, on the other hand, is tilted up relative to this. So I need to tilt it uh, so that it can come to the same point as these two. Again, it's an imaginary line, so you have to kind of picture it. What that means is, even though I tilted this side downward, I'm not tilting the lens up to meet it. I'm tilting it downward as well, but not as much. Because I'm sharp here, but blurry on the sides. So let's tilt. And I'm looking for a point where it's sharp all the way across. That's it. So I'm going to lock it. I have to move my easel a little bit. And there we go. I've got the road parallel with the bottom of the easel. I have the top of the window parallel with the top of the easel. The image is sharp on both sides. I can get in there with a grain focuser and double check if I need to. Uh, and then that's it. So I stopped down to my working aperture and let's go ahead and make a print. Now we have an image. It's not quite as converged as before. So here's a straight print of that. And we're going to now go under the assumption that your enlarger doesn't have the motion like this. You can't tilt your negative plane and lens plane separately. Most enlargers aren't able to. So we're going to have to move the easel to come to a point and then use the depth of field of our lens. So to do that, we're going to use one of my favorite studio tools and that is wobble wedges. And they're just little plastic wedges you can see here. They have little gripper teeth so that they can interlock with other wobble wedges. And we're just going to see which way I need to tilt it. Nope, the other way. And approximately how much. Okay, so I'm going to be moving it about an inch up. Yep, right about there. So, stick my wedges in there. And you can push these wedges further in if you need a little bit more tilt, or you can stack more wedges on top. Stack another pair. Actually, that looks pretty good right there. So I'm looking at my line, I'm looking at my line, and we're pretty parallel to the uh, easel, the, uh, the edge of the easel. And you can move those in and out until you get it perfect. But I can definitely see I'm sharper here, blurriest up here where I've lifted it. We need to focus in the center. Now I'm sharpest in the middle, blurry on either edge, and this is where we're going to stop down. We're going to stop down to about f16. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and stop down to f22. Uh, in my uh, best aperture for printing video, we saw that f22 did introduce a little bit of diffraction. We are going to have to just accept that uh, as a sacrifice for getting those converging lines. Now obviously the stronger converging lines you want to correct 
the more you're going to have to stop down, the more diffraction you're going to introduce. So it's up to you to decide how much you need to do this. This is really sort of a tool to fix a problem. Uh, it's best if you cannot have the problem to begin with. So just keep that in mind. Uh, if we're going to try to fix this, we're going to introduce other problems. You will have to weigh which one's more important. In this case, I think we're fine. So let's go ahead and make the print and that should take care of the problem. And there we go. With the enlargers I can move, we tilted the negative, got the line straight, tilted the lens, got our focus straight. Works pretty well. For enlargers like a Bessler 23C or a Bessler 45M where you can tilt the lens, you can move the easel for the shape and then move the lens for the focus. For enlargers that you can't move the focus, well, that's where the second method came in. And that is tilting the easel, getting the line straight, and then just stopping your lens down for depth of field at the printing plane. That will then take care of your sharpness issues. It's only going to be uh, possible for slight adjustments, not extreme adjustments like the first one we did because we're limited to the depth of field of your lens. You would just have to do some tests to see how much depth of field you get. Just simply tilt the easel more and more and more, doing test strips until you can't get both ends sharp. Uh, and that's pretty much it. That's, that's the amount of tilt you can get. Other than that, you should be good to go. Uh, we all know there well, not we all know. A lot of you who read up on Ansel Adams, uh, particularly in his three-part series, print, uh, negative, and camera, the other way around, uh, then you know that he did this with a portrait of Alfred Stieglitz because a painting behind him was not quite straight. Little movements like that are more likely what you're going to use. In that case, a little bit of easel tilt, stopping the lens down, and you're perfectly fine. So hope that helps you while you're making your prints. Get out there and make some photographs, and we'll see you next time.